talking because I'm drinking my ugly yet delicious smoothie. My smoothies don't always look the prettiest, but they damn sure enough taste good. Sucker free Sunday. Sucker free Sunday. How will you stay sucker free? You know, folks who call it self care Sunday. Even though we should be doing self care every day. And remember, self care isn't not just the pretty. Um, the pretty things like getting your hair done and your nails done or you know going to your favorite spot it is taking care of your whole self and to take care of yourself you got to know yourself you got to be honest with yourself take evaluations and be aware of self right because sometimes we be operating in that ego spirit and uh, it be having us wrapped up. I love you. Yeah, <laughs> I love you too. I said I love you too. I love you more. <laughs> um, so my self care is always, you know, setting my mental up, just processing, clearing sitting in the sun and I need to get some more aloe because I'm starting to peel just a little bit between the chlorine and the sun so self-care is also making sure I understand you know boundaries and limitations um, to not put myself at greater risk for things so a sucker free Sunday though is our reminder dead the sucker shit and it's not just the sucker shit from other people it's not just the stuff you know just limiting and putting up those boundaries because those are healthy you know understanding yourself and knowing your boundaries that's a good space but sucker free also means internal self-reflection because you can be the sucker for yourself self-sabotager you know I had a um, beautiful message given to me to remind me of this very idea for self, you know, and the way I pour into people or the way my um, love language is set up is gifts of service. And I mean, you know, this has a lot to do with one, my family, because of what they do. My parents, more specifically, who they were in life, who they, I mean, in their work life, who their parents were, um, but then also as the oldest, my mother's and my father's oldest in that relationship. Um, I mean, I have older siblings, but I grew up the oldest in the house, oldest of, and I'm not even the oldest cousin, but because of my placement in the line, I watched all my cousins children so all my older cousins had children that are younger than me around my age so I was the oldest so I was always doing something for somebody else stepping into responsibility so it's natural sometimes that giving doing picking up the slack um, is just the natural way um, and then add the Scorpio shit that I'm less talking and more dewy. <laughs> Ain't got time for the extra talk. Not the superficial. So, but it was just a, a moment of checking myself because you can get comfortable in these spots and not challenge yourself. Um, there's a, a chart that I put on the uh, Peel Hill Reveal page. If you're not following that, follow that for educational resources around psychedelics, more specifically psilocybin. <coughs> 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 
we had the air on a little bit last night and I can't do that most of the time give me a fan and a window open so helping battle that should have threw some ginger in here but anyway um just um yeah just pushing the comfort zone so yeah that that chart on the Peel Hill Reveal page talking about your comfort zone, low risk, low reward. You already know what to expect out of that shit. You know exactly what's going to happen there. And it makes you comfortable and you get stuck there. Uh, not to say that safe places, safe havens aren't a good thing, but you can't stay there. And so just pushing yourself outside of that into the learning and then the healing and growth zone. The more you push the boundaries, the more you, and, that, and this is a boundary for self now. This is not to say that you're letting people step over the boundaries that you have created. This is all about what is in your control, right? This is the stuff that you can control, your reaction, your, your understanding. And not putting that responsibility on other people um, to shift and mold you for that. And that's why folks be talking about healing is something that healers don't heal you they create space for you right but it's a choice right you'll see some of these folks talking about yeah i'm forcing you to heal that that um i i don't like that notion because it's like healing is a self journey right now there are not pe not to say that there are people who don't trigger who don't allow you to see those reflections and the spaces but it is up to you to make the choice whether or not you're going to take heed to those messages that you're going to get be given or you're going to retreat back to your comfort zone right so some people out there will trigger the fuck out of you right and they're not they are not specifically forcing you but the situation is saying hey grow from this learn from this or stay stuck right and so healers need to remove their ego from those things saying like look this ain't me this is still you i just gave you the opportunity to see it you know i just i'm call it a messenger type deal like i'm just here as the reflection just as the opportunity your choice in the matter is 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 still very much there and I tell even my daughter that ain't nobody forcing you to do nothing. Can't nobody make you do nothing that you didn't want to do. Now, there are situations that you either change or something else will be happening. Those moments can be very, very difficult. It can seem like there is no other option. But it's still a choice. And when you understand that control of choice, that you have a choice, that people can't force you into places then that allows you to step into your power and control your healing and, and be in control of, you know, what you magnify and what you manifest. And so that's an important step in this Sucker Free Sunday. Like, it's all on you, baby. So take a look at self. Take a look at the things around you and make those decisions. And sometimes it's going to be a tough motherfucking decision to let some people go, to let some shit go within yourself that you're holding on to. It's not easy. If healing was easy, people would be doing it without a problem. If, uh, facing things was easy, you know, there wouldn't be shit to face at all. Anyway, but... Sucker free is the way to be. Sucker free is the way to be. So, my sucker free Sunday is going to consist of talking to these plants. Probably sliding to the pool again, although I probably shouldn't. Uh, cooking up some good mushrooms. Doing some meditation and reflection. Some journaling. And doing some work in the lab. I got to make these Lion's Mane extract gummies. Y'all know to hit me up for all of your good herbal needs. Um, still working on some things. Got some shit popping off real soon. I say that often, but I swear it's always something popping off. 
I gotta get rid of this shit right now. I do. I gotta get rid of all this. I don't like it. Detox time, right? My mama laughing. Because it's so funny. Because when you do good things for yourself, right? It's kind of like that. Well, I grew up a preacher kid, right? My dad was a minister. And so you heard often, like, people who were like, oh, he the pastor, he ain't supposed to, or you're a preacher's daughter, you ain't supposed to, like, it's this, it's a funny notion about, you know, people still being in these human bodies, doing human shit, but people put certain notions on pedestals, like, you can fuck up, but other people can't fuck up, okay, great, gotcha, but, um, sorry, my screen went black, I don't know what that be meaning. Anyway, so, when you make conscious efforts to do better with your health, and then things happen, you eat something you ain't supposed to. Like, me and rice, I shouldn't eat rice. I know it. I, I already know that rice and me ain't friends. It'll hit the sniffles, and then the air conditioning on top of that. Last night, just, and then I should have been doing a couple detoxes. I, I had some fish when I was down south. Um. I eat fish mm, once a month, maybe. Um, it's not like I said, a habit. Like, I don't know. If you lived in more Caribbean coastal communities, you probably would eat more fish and trust the source a little more, even though y'all be polluting the fuck out of the ocean. That's another story. Anyway, um, my mom always cracks me up because she's like, mm hmm, look at you, you're sniffling too. And it's like, yeah, it's people who do good things for their body can still be out of balance, out of whack. We just more aware of it and quit at a quicker rate. I should be. To be able to adjust a little quicker. And not sitting here and be like, oh no, it's just this, that, and the third. Accepting it. So yes, people who eat right still can have some hiccups. just the adjustments it's just awareness what do you need to do next right mm. also if you've made it to this point in this video um tomorrow we will have a discussion i'm dropping the link today i think i'm gonna do a zoom link and then stream that on the facebook room um somehow so we're gonna have a zoom conversation in a Facebook room conversation about meditation, mindfulness, and mushrooms. Like, how do we utilize these M's together? These M's connect, right? So, more specifically, um, tips and strategies and just thoughts, just talking over, like, how uh, meditation and mindfulness practice will aid you in um, journeys that seem a little more difficult or confusing or intense um i don't like to use the word bad um because even the ones that are difficult even though the ones that are intense if set with the right mindfulness can be very beneficial to your growth in your journey um process and in this integration so i know there's a lot of people who have negative experiences that allow them to not process or pull the lesson from it or pull the what they're supposed to see because it's they're so focused and a lot of times rightfully understood that they're focused on the negative or the intense emotional or confusing experience and so there's a lot that goes on to into those kind of experiences and what constitutes Bad, the word bad so I, like I said I like to use the word difficult intense confusing um, and so like I said not everybody is meant to journey um, just because of where everybody is in their understanding of mindfulness but if you are one of those who is or has an experience that didn't exactly um, sit well with you even post experience we could talk about how mindfulness and meditation can help us process and integrate those lessons um, because spirit called you to do that for a reason so it's it's up to you to understand how to pull it into the life that you have right now in the present moment so that you can keep 
walking forward in purpose and power, right? That's all what the trap house is about, right? Transmuting experiences, transmuting the reality, and reality is subjective, you know. Reality is what's real for you. And we're taking those experiences and ensuring that it turns us into a position of receiving power, prosperity, and peace. And yeah. So yeah, that'll be Monday. I'm gonna drop the flyer again. So it's gonna be at noon because and then I'll probably do at noon and at three. Just to have two discussions, one on Facebook and one on Zoom. And so we're just starting these conversations, just getting to the place where we talk, um, especially melanated folks. Um, there's going to be not as many safe spaces that are out in the open with it. Um, one, our stigma around the use of mind-altering substances is rightfully fragmented. Um, it is just what it is. And so we just want to we'll have a conversation too about dispelling some myths that exist and why do we feel that it is like I mean because there's this couple pages out there like there's one like black people trip and um the ancestor project which is formerly named known as the Sabina project um they changed their name recently to reflect a deeper understanding of an ancestral connection especially to the mother continent but, um, so there's, there's melanated folks out there that do, I mean, we were stewards of this long before colonization, and then there's a good lecture series coming about the emancipation of psychedelics and its connection to African roots, and because there's just not even on the knowledge base, like, you'll see people of color, and I use that term real loosely right now, um, because they'll talk about India, they'll talk about Asia, and talk about even, you know, um, Mexican, American, uh, Mexican, not Americans, Mexicans, uh, South American um, links up into psychedelics, but you don't really hear the research talk about the African connection <clears throat> and its use there. Um, but if you realize, like, every corner of the world was from Australia into the Asian continent and South America and it's because as tribes became more nomadic and explored and took this knowledge with them and then they started seeing it in other places right um so you and then you especially won't see the western world talk about Africa and um its use and things like that for them they the stewards they they, they the ones who bring you the knowledge and <laughs> let them tell it let them tell it that this was mystery stuff that we can use so yeah anyway so there's people out there that do it they just don't talk um for various reasons and the reasons could get thick and long and it's still not a substance that is treated with respect especially with the war on drugs especially again with our history in the states as it relates to it to drugs to mind altering substances and also just from the healing aspect um, when some people become vocal in some communities they start disappearing because now you're starting to fuck with big money and stuff like that so um, but as this stuff comes more to the light as veils are removed continuously um, I think it is an important space to be in to understand um, one because the accessing of this tool, this ancient technology. I'm even starting to get away from just calling it a healer because shit, I use it as an exploration of the universe type. Um, but this ancient tech, um, there's altered carbon. Actually, if you watch that, it'll give you a clue as to what they've already known and so they created that movie series around and there's a whole bunch of shit happening in there but if you don't miss the focus you get to see that all that ancient technology had to deal with an underground connecting network that served as this internet this ancient ability to travel 
and it's found with underground connecting all life together. And what the fuck is that? That's fucking mycelium. That's fucking mushrooms, right? Um, so I know. I'll be going overhead sometimes, but that's okay. This stuff sparked your interest. Let me know. We'll get you the link to the to the group chat, to the to the discussion, and to some educational opportunities. Cause first, we should just learn. We should know. We should talk about this shit. You know, we should understand so that when it comes time to create space for those who are ready they're ready and it's not just something that we throw together haphazardly sacred tools are not <laughs> they they shouldn't be play play with for play play and for play play in that way like you can enjoy it and understand its power but some people be like nah just fuck around with the fuck around. Fuck around to get smoked for real. <laughs> Alright. I'm done. I'm gonna enjoy the rest of the sunshine. Get my yoga on. Um, get my stress on. Stretch on. Not my stress. Stretch a bit. Stretch a bit. Meditate. Alright y'all. Peace and love family.